Now it is. Can you see both of us? Yep. Perfect. Here I am with my good friend Bill Lyons. We're out at the scenic viewpoint checking out beautiful canyons here in Arizona. Beautiful big billowy cumulus clouds like nothing you've ever seen before. Nice warm breeze blowing. Just a uh, place to get inspired. A place to get back to nature. Feel one with the universe. So I'm with Jordan Adler, one of my closest friends and mentors. And he had, we had the honor and privilege of staying at his beautiful home in Jerome, which was awesome. It's an like old ghost town. And we just went through Sedona. And now we're up here because we know it's a scenic view. We could have stopped at Oak Creek Canyon where there's about four people every four square feet. <laughs> but we chose not to stop there. <laughs> You can only imagine what's in the water down there. Oh, so Jordan, geez. Jordan is a famous author. Wrote the book Beach Money, number four on Amazon. 100% of the profits go to charity. Must throw that in there. Kiva, Kiva. Check out www.kiva.org and help some entrepreneurs in some country where we don't have, where they don't have the same opportunities that we do here in the United States. So Jordan, I got a few sayings from Jordan. One is, uh, he's a go-giver. Uh, what's the, what's the other one uh, that you got from me? <laughs> yeah. you, you got a, uh, it's a, it's a appreciation every, over self-promotion. Appreciation over self-promotion. And every thought that keeps you from taking action towards your dream is a brick in the fortress of your prison. Razor sharp focus, that's another one I got from Jordan. Um, leaders deal with adversity differently. Leaders deal with adversity differently. Now tell us about one of your challenges towards have, your road to well, success. Oh, well, I have one pair of pants that don't fit me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and what else? Um, well, t tell us about when when Excel went down. What, what happened? Oh <laughs> what happened in your life? What thoughts well, were going through your mind? Depression, well, anger, opposed to those that couldn't let it go, that let it go. What was the difference there? Yeah, I mean, it was shock. I think it was just shock when, uh, when the, the company went away. Um, you know, I had many years of just lots of freedom to be able to just go anywhere and, you know, with my friends and travel the world. And all of a sudden, one day, it just, that cash flow just went away. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing was just, you've got literally hundreds and hundreds of friends they're all part of that same organization. And the big question is, you know, where's everybody gonna go? And will I ever see these people again? And will they still be my friends? And all those kinds of things. So you can find out who your true friends are. But yeah, so when that all went away, it was quite a shock. It was, uh, it was quite a jolt in the world. So what would say you learned from those that still held on? I think that it really comes down to the ability to very quickly adapt and transform yourself to, 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 to really be able to reinvent yourself, kind of like an Etch-a-Sketch. You know, when you do a drawing on an Etch-a-Sketch, when you're done, you kind of turn that Etch-a-Sketch upside down and shake it, and you start with a clean slate. Well, the quicker you can get to that point where you're at a clean slate, where you're starting from ground zero and you can then rebuild, you have to get to that point where you can rebuild. And uh, a lot of people hold on tight to the past, and uh, you don't have a future if you're holding on tight to the past. It just doesn't it doesn't allow you to really create anything, you know, worth living for. So um, I believe that you know motivation comes from having something really compelling and exciting and inspiring to look forward to. When you have something to look forward to. You're excited and you're motivated. But when you're you feel like you have no options, then you get depressed and you're unmotivated. Did so, you allow yourself to feel depressed? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you, how you get, long? You get, for weeks. Weeks? Not months or years. I've got friends that four and a half years later, they're still depressed. And they're right. still talking about how they were wronged and how you know, they were dealt a bad uh, hand. And, and, and they're blaming, they're still blaming the people from the past for their problems. And you just got to let go of all that stuff because it doesn't make any difference. Right. And recreate. Recreate. Start from scratch. Reinvent yourself. You know, really take uh, an inventory of all the resources, the people, your friends, your business.
business partners, your contacts, your network, you know, take an inventory of, of what you have available to you right at your fingertips and just start there. So don't take advice from anyone that doesn't have any accomplishments or doesn't have any experience. Yeah, just the only thing you want to get from that is what not to do. Right, yeah. So what other tips now that you're, you exemplify the go-giver? I recommend that you guys read the go-giver. Does that mean wrap it up? Does that mean wrap it up? <laughs> Are we just talking now? Are we boring you? <laughs> so what else? Did you get that on camera? <laughs> so we've got the beach money. We've got leaders deal with adversity differently. We've got uh, razor sharp focus. We've got appreciation over self promotion. Right. You send out cards to do that. Yeah. And then treat your treat your contacts and your relationships like the most valuable thing that you've got in your life. It's not about the sale. It's about the long-term relationship that you build with the people in your life. And, you know, when you do that, when you, you know, really do your best to respect those relationships, then when the timing is right, the people that are meant to do business with you will do business with you. What? Over and out. Bye. Over and out.